them. Okay. Um, we're starting Unit 18 today, and um, the main part of Unit 18 introduces you to a fourth athematic verb in the same series as tithemi, didome, and histeme. Um, and, and it really is extremely similar to tithemi. It's, it's almost identical, in fact. Um, Polisi's put up on the blackboard the asterisk form there, this thing, with ye ye me, that's the original form. There once was a y in ancient Greek, there isn't any more. And so you can see that this is a reduplicated form like did omit, that's the present of the verb. Originally the, there was a y, when the y disappeared, it turned into an initial h. So yes, why the, the first form is he a me, not ye a me. But that ye, uh, which becomes he, is going to disappear outside of the present system, okay? Mm -hmm. um, the other aspect of it that's like tithime is that you have change in the vowel in the stem, okay? That is, the, in the present singular, you've got an eta. That's really the root, e, ye. We get, without the y, it's just e, okay? Um, you've got the h, so it's he, okay? Um, and that can alternate between the form with an eta, a form with an epsilon iota, right, the diphthong form of the stem, mm -hmm. and the form with an epsilon. So just as you have with dithyme, you have the, the stem the with an eta, the with an epsilon iota, and the with an epsilon. So you have the same with um, So basically, these, these things are, are the same. The, the distinctions are minute, okay? And as long as you keep in mind the principle that you have a duplication with an I in the imperfective aspect system, okay, so in the present and the imperfect, um, you're going to have lose that reduplication with an I and have something like reduplication uh, with, uh, of a different sort, okay, in this case, um, we'll see what it is, because we're not beginning with a consonant, but we're going to have K reduplication in the case of Hiemet. Uh, K, a K suffix and redu a vocalic reduplication in the case of this word. Um, you're, you're, and then the aorist, you're going to have no reduplication, so the root's just going to be he, okay? Mm -hmm. Or he, he, or whatever it is, okay? Um, it's, it's the, the principles of it are the same. So the endings are, the way, the way it works is that you have a stem, and it's either he, a, in the case of the present system, imperfective system, he, a, he, a, or he a with an ei, then you just add the athematic verb endings. And remember, those are different. Um, me in the first person singular, si in the third person singular, and asi in the third person plural. Um, and then in the secondary endings, endings for past tenses, you've got nu, sigma, and nothing, then man, te, and san as a third plur person plural ending. Those other endings, nu, sigma, and nothing, are the same for athematic and thematic verbs. You're drifting off the picture here, Lacey. <laughs> Sorry. Come on. <laughs> um, all right. So if we look at the particular forms, we've got he, a, me. The e is the reduplication, is the result of the reduplication. The iota is the only thing that's left in the h. And then you've got the stem a, and then the ending me. And the second person singular have he, a. So that's the original in the archaic form. There is a secondary form that the book is giving you with an e, i, and notice there's a circumflex over it. That's a sign of contraction. What eventually happens, for example, if you start reading uh, the New Testament in ancient Greek, um, Koine Greek it's called, these verbs become contract verbs. Okay, so that's a secondary form. Um, the original form is definitely hies with a long vowel, smack up against it and not contracted. Then hies, which can have a new movable, whatever. At the end of it, that's your third person singular. The plural, you switch, you still have the reduplication, the he, and you switch to the short vowel form of the stem, eh. So you got he, and then he, et. And what was, for example, in tithe me, you have tithe men, tithe te, tithe ase. In the case of he, me, weirdly, you have contraction. Okay, so you get he, ase. It's really weird because the only thing, you've lost, therefore, the root, <laughs> which is the eh. Okay, but that's no longer clear to the people who are doing it, so. Or they think of it as he, I guess. All right, so if you look at the imperfect, um, the imperfect's going to lengthen that iota all through the paradigm to make an augmented form, just like he, stay me, as 
his, his thing maybe becomes he's then he stays he stay and so forth in the imperfect tense so and here you see the same alternation between the in the vocalism of the stem that you see in tithema so the in the imperfect of tithema it's etithain with an eta and then etithes and etithe both with epsilon iota here's where you got he ain't he aca and then the revert to the third person in the plural to the short vowel form of the stem he amen he eta he on there's your th your past tense ending okay mm -hmm. so what distinguishes the second the first and second persons plural is the long vowel okay um should we move on to the next page yep. so on this page the first form list is missing an accent over the omega there right mm -hmm. be a second point okay <laughs> the first column has a subjunctive okay what's happened is as it says at the bottom of the of the blackboard there all forms are based on the stem here okay um, we're going to see that for the rest of the forms that we're looking at practically in the imperfective aspect system that is the vowel alternation between here here and here disappears after the presence and uh, the present and the imperfect okay um, everything's going to be built on here so what happens when you combine here with o s a omen eta ose is you get you lose the air and you get a circumflex okay you're contracting it was originally the air would be the accented form the omega the eta and the and the endings then would be unaccented so you get a circumflex as a result so he o he a se he omen he eta he also you should be comfortable with that there's your it's as though the stem is he okay and then in the optative you have the iota eta optative he a he a he a Again, based on the stem he e, and then plus iota eta, and then the new sigma nothing uh, endings, and then the plural he amen he eta he a n. You can also have the iota eta optative in the plural. In other words, that would be he a e, amen he e, eta with an eta he a e, he a e, a n. <laughs> <laughs> All right for the for the for the optative, but the shorter form is more common actually. Amen. He ate. Uh, he ate. He ate and run. Um, then we have the imperative forms. Second person singular. He a. That means. Well, yeah. We haven't told you the meaning of this word. <laughs> it means to let go of something. Okay, to release it, and and therefore sometimes it's translated as send. Okay, really mm -hmm. doesn't mean means let go of a of a weapon. For example, mm -hmm. uh, that's the classic use of it to release it uh, like an arrow. Okay, or javelin. That's sending it more more less passively than letting go of it. Mm -hmm. So the, in Latin the cognate of this word means just throw. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. um, but the underlying sense is originally let go of it. Okay? So hit a means is is what you say to a second person. Hit eto is let him or her throw it. And he at and he and tone second person plural and third person plural imperatives. All all again built on the he stem. Okay. Well, lastly, in the imperfective aspect, there's the present infinitive with the ending ni that we've seen in all these verbs. That's mm -hmm. com comparable to didani and to thenai and histani, right? The he is the stem, yeah, and on the ni ending. And the, and the participle, based on the stem he, you get he is, he is, a, he en, and then he entos, he is, he, is, he entos, and you can figure out the rest of the forms. So it's the he is, is he ent plus s. E N T S becomes E I S in Greek by regular process, and there's something similar going on to give you the feminine form, Hiesa, but that's a false type feminine uh, declension, and then he and Hiantos is just the neuter in a predictable way. Original Hient becomes Hien, and the nominative and accusative. So I think these are forms that are familiar to you. It's just you you've got a very restricted root. Uh, here because of the sound changes, the disappearance of the Y. Okay, now we're looking at the aorist active forms of um, where you're going to lose the Y, which becomes He. You still have the H, okay, because remember the stem was Y, Y, M. So the, the initial Y it gets reflected as an H. Um, if you look at the first form in the upper left-hand corner, that's the aorist with a kappa suffix, as you've seen in the singular of tithime, eteka, didome, edoka, um, 
uh, uh, not his statement, but uh, um, um, but uh, those two have the kappa aorist in the singular, so we have that too in this verb. Heka, hekas, heka. Notice these forms. Uh, I talked about this before. Have a, a dash in front of them because um, mainly in these this verb in general is. Uh, weakly attested as a simple verb. Most of the time it occurs as a compound. So, ap mm -hmm. which yeah, comes out as a fi, ap hieme, ep um, uh, Those are the most common forms of the verb, and there are other compounds that you can do. Met is the other one, meta hieme. That's the one, the most common form of this verb, I think. It means let go of something. But, so, so the inflections are preceded by the dash because they're usually occurring in compound verbs. All right, so we've got heka, hekas, heka. This is familiar if you remember the athematic uh, aorists singular of the other verbs. In the plural, you lose the kappa. You just have the, um, the long vowel form of the stem. No, what's happened is that you have a he, man, originally a short vowel form of the stem, and then it's augmented with an e. So it once was e, ye, men, and when the y disappears, you get the contraction of the two e's into e, i, okay? Um, so the, the he form reflects uh, um, uh, augmenting uh, um, the thing and the contraction of the others, okay? Mm -hmm. And the contraction giving you an eta. Here you got an e ending and a short vowel with a short an e augment in a short vowel form in the stem. So that's why you have eta in the singular and epsilon iota in the plural. I hope that's clear. <laughs> I'm not sure. But anyway, so you got he men he to he san, those predictable athematic endings. Notice what happens when you get to the aorist subjunctum. The only thing that's left of the stem because of the contraction of the he is just the h. So it's ho he he, ho men he to uh, remember how the present subjunctive of the verb to be looks. It's just o a s a omen eta ose because there's nothing left of the stem of the verb to be. <laughs> okay, so in the in the same kind of thing happens in the optative. You get just the h hey and hey 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 men hey ta hey hen or with the iota eta optative hey men hey ta hey hey son. Um, the imperatives there hes and heto. And the stem is he, and the endings are s in the second person singular imperative, and do in the third, and then the plural he, te, and henton, consistent with all, everything we know about imperative endings in mathematic verb formation. And the bottom of the page there is the way you form the aorist active participle. So heis, hesa, hen are the three genders, hentos, heses, hentos uh, for the sub. The genitives, and from them you can generate the rest of the forms. Hase is from hence, okay, and it looks exactly like the form of the number one. H e n t s gives you hase, just like a, a no, the other the other one. The etymology of the other one is a little more complex, but they end up being the same. Um, but that means throwing or releasing. Okay, I'm going to stop there, and we're going to do the middle and another one.